telling us that this is what we ought to have a passion that we ought to carry a commission that we ought to have and he had that commission and i pray that we too will have that same thing in jesus name you see christ through the patient gave paul clear details as for the content and scope of the commission he was commissioned to preach the gospel not to win an argument to some people to god and to and to not to condemn them he was bold to make christ known at every opportunity and what opportunities you have at home what opportunities you have in your neighborhood what opportunities you have everywhere in your place of work then stand up and speak out and let the people know you are commissioned already and i pray that that commission you will fulfill in jesus name and let's look at john chapter 15 john chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 3 john chapter 15 we're looking at verse 3 now ye are clean through the word which i have spoken unto you ye are clean through the word which i have spoken unto you and what do you think of a person that goes to the bathroom and then he turns the shower on and then he washes and washes and washes and then he's clean and then he turns the shower on again and he washes and washes and washes and he's uh, you know more than clean and he turns the shower on again and he keeps on washing and washing and washing and then after about one hour there you're just here in the shower then you call to him you say hey so and so are you not through yet oh he says you know i just enjoy another shower and just washing and washing and washing the same thing with you just come to the bible study through the word i have spoken unto you sanctify them by the washing of water by the word and you turn the shower on and you hear the word and hear the word and hear the word and then you don't do anything you come back again hear the word hear the word hear the word you don't do anything hear the word hear the word hear the word commission after the cleansing after the lord has cleansed you after the lord has washed you after you turn the shower on and you are clean so the word that has spoken unto you you go out and reveal christ unto others look at verse 16 now in verse 16 you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit not just to sit down how many people went through with us you know for all those uh, all those uh, periods who were studying the book of jonah and uh, study one study two study three until study ten and then we are two in between making 12 all together and just hearing those 12 studies of evangelism and so we need he did nothing just just study just hear the word just shower just wash in the word just be clean just be righteous just be holy just hear the word just come to bible study and they do nothing the reason why we come is so we can go the reason why we receive is so we can give to other people and the reason why the lord has brought us in that the word of god is doing something in our lives is so that we too we can take that word and take it out to the people where the people are it's not just to keep on hearing and hearing and hearing and we do nothing what do you think of the person that's just eating every time and it doesn't work only eat 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 and never works what do you think of a person that is eating the word of god accepting the word of god studying the word of god and he never goes out to do what the lord has called him to do do something the lord said you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and i've ordained you and i'm sending you forth that you will go forth that you must bear fruit and that your fruit may remain then he says that whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name he may give it to you in isaiah chapter 6 isaiah chapter 6 what did he from verse 5 isaiah chapter 6 verse 5 then said i woe is me why am i undone because I'm a man of unclean leaves, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean leaves, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, 
which he had taken of the tongues from up the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy leaves. Thine iniquity is taken away, thy sin is purged. That's holiness. That's cleansing. That's sanctification. But does God stop there? Doesn't he have a reason for purging our sin? For cleansing us? For sanctifying us? You know, people think that once they are sanctified, once they are holy, once they are righteous, once they are living clean life, praise the Lord, I used to be weak. I used to be, you know, up and down. But now I am strong in the Lord. Temptation is not conquering me anymore. Have you reached the end of the road because you are sanctified? But commission, after that cleansing, after that uh, sanctification, there is commission. That's why we read in verse 8 also I had the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I say? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. I pray you respond to the call of the Lord, even at this time in Jesus' name. Now we have point number three, Christ-like commitment to the heavenly vision. Christ-like commitment to the heavenly vision. Christ-like commitment to the heavenly vision. Uh, that means that the Lord is showing us a pattern. The Lord is showing us who He is. And then we are to follow the pattern of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you look at the life of Paul the Apostle, that's exactly what we are going to see. He followed the example, the pattern, the model of the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts of the Apostles chapter 26. Acts chapter 26, verse 19, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. For there were times, the body was weak, but his soul was strong, and the mind was strong, and the spirit was strong. And look at it this way. You have spirit, you have soul, you have body. And then the body is tired, and the body is weak, but your soul is strong, and your spirit is strong, and you are not ruled by your body, you are ruled by the inner man. And the strength in the inner man speaks to the third body and said, Wake up, stand up, follow me. And then your spirit leads the way, and the body follows on. Yes, Paul the Apostle, there were times of weakness. There were times of tiredness, but the inner man was strong in the Lord. And therefore, he always spoke to his body. He said, body, you cannot lie down. There is work to do. And you cannot relax now. There is work to do. Even when your feet are in the stocks and you are in the prison, then he still sang the praise of the Lord. And a miracle happened there. And the salvation of the Philippian jailer also followed. And so you could say, King Agrippa, in the day, in the night, in the rainy season, in the dry season, in the excited time and the discouraging time, I have not been disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but I should force unto them of Damascus, and then at Jerusalem, and throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles that they shall repent, and turn to God, and do the works meet for repentance. This year, when your body appears weak, and your body is talking to you and saying, now, I'm tired today, and I'm going to control you. You are not going to do the work of God today. What, what will your inner man say? I said, what will your inner man say? Rise up and get going and do the work again. And then you'll find that your inner man takes charge and takes authority and takes control. And then your body follows after your will succeed. And that's what happened to Paul the Apostle. And then in Acts of the Apostles chapter 20 from verse 20. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20 from verse 20. And how I kept nothing back that was profitable unto you. But I've showed you and I've taught you publicly and from house to house. I have taught you publicly and I've taught you privately. Hey, can you see the attitude of Paul the Apostle? He wasn't waiting until he saw a large crowd. When the large crowd was there, he preached to them. And when it was only the household of the Philippian jailer, he preached unto them. When it was an individual, he preached unto him privately, house to house one-on-one -on -one, or publicly mass evangelism he was always ready and you know there are some people that are not always ready if it's a small crowd they cannot preach if it's an individual they cannot talk 
But Paul the Apostle said, large or small, a mass or just an individual, I keep on preaching. And then he said in verse 21, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem. That means my spirit is telling me, hey, trouble is coming. Persecution is coming. It's like almost wanting to say, are you still going to go? I go bound in the spirit of the Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Save that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying that bounds and affliction abide me. That is, they are waiting for me. They will not come on other people. It's for me they are waiting. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my cause with joy. Persecution, joy. Suffering, finish with joy. Opposition, finish with joy. Restraint, finish with joy. And then bottlenecks here, hindrance here, finish with joy. Joy does not depend on what the people are doing to you. It depends on you, inside, happiness. I is at the center of that word happiness. It's you that will make yourself happy or unhappy, joyful or not joyful, that I might finish my course of joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. How did he do that? He just followed the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Reading from verse 34. John chapter 4. Reading from verse 34. Jesus says unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. That's what I, that's what I lay before me. That's what I put before me every time. My meat. The thing that gets me good. The thing that feeds me. And the thing that satisfies me. And the thing that strengthens me. And the thing for which I'm living is to do the work of the Lord. And then to do the will of Him that sent me. And to finish His work. That was the same purpose in the life of all the apostles. In John chapter 6, verse 38. John 6, 38. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will. Not to do my own will. You know, sometimes when the body is tired, what's my will? My will will be to sleep and to relax. And then to take it easy. It's relax. Because now you're tired. That's my will when I'm tired. When there's opposition, what's your will? Your will is to hide yourself, to keep yourself. There's a lion in the way. And the lion will cheer me up. What's our will at that time is to hide. Hide your head. Don't let them break your head because there's trouble now. But Jesus said, when my will is trying to rear itself, I said, no, no, it cannot be. I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but to do the will of him that sent me. In the times of opposition, in the times of persecution, in the times of tiredness, your will will like to show up. Remind yourself, hey, hey, you cannot do that now. You, you try to avoid responsibility in the whole year. Anytime there's a little kind of problem, you're afraid and then you hide yourself. That's your will. You rise up and then you do what the Lord has called you to do. Chapter 8, verse 38, 6, 38 of John. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And that's, how, that's what Paul did, that's how Paul lived, and that's how you are to live, so that you will live a Christ-like life, with Christ-like commitment. In John chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 4, John 17 verse 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. How does that happen? It happens by taking note of your life every night. Take today for example. Can you recollect what happened since morning till afternoon, till evening, till this time? 
Can you look back and say, I've glorified you on the earth today. And then tomorrow, in the evening, you look at everything that happened. And then you'll say, Lord, as I look at every interaction, every conversation, every activity, everything you called me to do, the heart with which I did it, the attitude with which I did it, the comportment with which I did it, the spirit, the enthusiasm with which I did it today, from morning to evening, I glorify thee on the earth today. If you live like that every day, and you check up every night, I have glorified you on the earth today. Then the whole week, you look at it at the end of the week. How did I leave this week out? Praise the Lord. I have glorified thee on the earth this week. At the end of the month, you look at it. If you live your life like that, checking up every day, every week, every month, then you are going to find at the end of life, you'll be able to say, like Jesus Christ, I have glorified thee on the earth. But if you live from day to day without even checking up, the things to cleanse, the things to wash up, and the things to cancel, and the things to improve, and the things to increase, and the things to work on in your life, you'll just live from day to day an aimless life. If you're going to glorify God at the end of life, every day you must be checking up. And that's what Jesus did. And then at the end of ministry, you got to say, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou givest me to do. I pray it will happen like that to you. In Hebrews chapter 10, I'm reading verse 7. Hebrews chapter 10, we're looking at verse 7. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is reaching of me to do thy will, O God. What a verse. What a statement. What a principle. You wake up tomorrow morning. And then before you ever step out, before you ever speak to anybody, you say, Lord, I welcome this new day. What a new chance for me. And I come to this new day to do thy will. Oh God, in your family, in my family, I want to do your will. In the church, I want to do your will. In the world, as I meet with the people out there, I want to do your will. This day, I'm waking up. I'm telling you, Lord, I come to this new day to do thy will. And then all through the day, you remember. When you want to speak, you remember. When you want to do anything, you remember. I come this day to do thy will, oh God. And then at the beginning of every week, Lord, this is a new week. Help me by your grace, your strength and your power to do thy will, O God. When you come 